Just watching some Olympics. Nice. What event? Swimming. Nice. So, I know you wanted to talk about soccer, I guess. Oh, what's it called? Uh, yeah, I had some um, thing on earlier. I was debating with some – well, I didn't even get to debate because they, they joined for two seconds and they lagged out. And then this one dude, I forgot his username, but I swear to – I know him when I see him. He's like, oh, you should debate this guy named Logical. He's like a big sports fan. And I'm like, well, Logical's not online right now, so how am I supposed to debate Logical? And then you came online, and then you challenged my statement. I'm like, fuck yeah, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, I mean uh... – was it? I mean, you're you're right though. Like soccer is the most popular sport in the world, right? It is. I yeah, it is. Why why is it the most popular sport in the world? I think all right. I know why you think it's the most popular sport in the world because um, I, I we tried debating yesterday, but we had internet problems, unfortunately. I remember that. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. I honestly cannot say. Uh, why do you think that it is popular because of lack of money or sports equipment? Well, it's, it's proven. I mean, it's sociology, right? It's like, why, why are Mexicans great boxers? It's because they don't need any equipment. They just wrap rags around their hands and beat each other in the face. You know, so basically the same is true with soccer, where you can tie a bunch of rags together and you have a soccer ball. And you don't need sports equipment. You don't need a baseball bat or a glove or you know, pads or a ball that inflates, like you can, you can make do with, with whatever you want. Well, and all I, and honestly with ideology, you can pretty much do the same for most sports. You know, you can get a, a thick wooden stick and tie a bunch of rice together for a baseball. Obviously it's not going to have nowhere near the same effect with as, you know, a regular baseball would. And obviously rags aren't going to have the same effect as a normal soccer ball would. But the thing about soccer is, the main reason why it's one of the most popular sports in the world is because UEFA itself, the United European Football Association itself, brings in more money than the NFL does per year. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's like, is that is that a re, is that a result of the sport being better or that it's more popular? It's popular. I'm not saying honestly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, I would yeah. I would much rather watch the NFL than a random ass Champions League game any day of the week. All right. But there is no – but soccer obviously is the most popular sport in the world. And, you know, if – who knows? If American football was all over the place, maybe we'd be talking about why the NFL is the most popular, you know. But um, it is the biggest – amongst all sports, it's the most popular, obviously. It's the biggest money generator amongst all sports in the world. And the whole poverty thing, I don't really buy that because, in all honesty – all, nearly every country on this planet has their own independent soccer league. Some countries have three or four soccer leagues. You know what I mean? Obviously, we know all the main ones. You know, the Europeans, you know, they have the BPL, the Spanish Premier League, the Portuguese League, the German Bundesliga. And in North America, we got the uh, we got the Liga MX. We got the MLS, you know. And in poverty, like, I don't know, Argentina and Brazil especially is getting a lot of heat right now. They still are able to run multiple independent soccer leagues, which is a multi- hundred million dollar industry in itself not per country but it's a multi-million dollar industry that costs millions of dollars to run and to infiltrate all these new stadiums and to, pu and to publicize all of this so i mean soccer it's not a fluke why it's popular it's not oh you know they don't got money so that's why it's well, popular. It's I'm, I'm not saying that it, it's all right so the rise, I, I know, the I know from like the a, rise of soccer global standpoint, you're not saying because of the money it's like Hey, let's go play soccer. That's what. I, that's what I. That's yeah. The, well, well. So you, what you learn is like in the sociology of sports. What you learn is, uh, you know, your surroundings have a lot to do with with uh, what you end up liking. You're like what influences you, uh, you you have. So on that, that's why I like basketball a lot. That's why I play it. Yeah, I mean, you grew up probably around a bunch of other kids that like to play basketball, and and you know, you had a ball and, and a court near you, so you you played a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So the same is true with like kids that grow up in those countries, you know, whether, whether they're poor or not, uh, they, the, the reason that they, that they have those sports now is because they were only able to have access to them for a long time. And so now the country might, might still support them with these leagues and everything, but, uh, they're not making any changes towards more sophisticated or sports that require uh, more money to play. You don't see a lot of, you know, world-class golfers coming out of, you know, you know, South America, for, in for instance. Yeah. So, um, 
you know, it's not a good or bad thing. I, I personally think soccer is one of the most boring sports on the planet. You know, it's 90 minutes of, uh, you know, one goal. And some people enjoy it because they think it's a chess match and you have like different strategies and you pass the ball around and you get close a lot and it's exciting and to them. And, you know, I would rather, like you said, I'd rather watch a good football game, you know, but again, I, I like, I think baseball's could be particularly boring to a lot of people too, but I'll watch a good no hitter and be excited by it. So I can, you know, I just can't relate to the soccer thing and, and, you know, I can't bash people that enjoy soccer. Um, I yeah, in all honesty, I'm a pretty – I mean, I prefer NFL. I'm pretty sure everybody in America prefers NFL over football. But, I mean, I honestly do like soccer. So, would you – so, I wouldn't really say it's a money thing. I think it's more of a surrounding thing. Would you say it's because of – would you say soccer is more popular amongst kids in other countries because of money or because they're not being influenced by other sports around them? Like, it doesn't take much to get basketball. You don't need yeah, to well, now, so now, now as, like, the global economy, can, you know, and countries start to do better – like you can have affluent kids from those same countries that still love soccer because soccer is what is all that's around them. Right. Like the soccer stars are the ones making the most money, the ones they look up to, you know, sure. so, so they're going to still strive to be soccer players also. So it, again, you know, that's what sociology is. It's not necessarily just economical. It, it's, it's your surroundings. Mm-hmm. So what's it called? Um, do you believe like, let's say I'm going to use it uh, in my opinion, the second most popular sport in the world. Like, let's say a basketball was influenced in, uh, in all these other countries. Do you? What is the most uh, second most popular? I would say base, uh, not baseball, basketball. In my, in my opinion, basketball. In my opinion. It might oh, be but, because but basketball is basketball, really popular in China, hockey, believe it or not. But you, know what, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Like in terms of like a, a, mer- a sport, I don't know. Cricket and field hockey is probably like number two. But you know what I mean by basketball. Who, who gives a shit about cricket or field hockey? <laughs> but I don't know. R- rugby's fun to watch. Oh, definitely. Right the- I've watched oh a cricket God. match and I have no idea what's going on. I'm so confused. Like, there's people running back and forth between sticks and and like I I don't I don't I really don't understand like the rules of cricket to really enjoy it. But it is similar to baseball, so there is that. There is that. Yeah. What's it called? Um, I don't know. I feel as if um. I don't know what it is about soccer that's like so influenced in these other countries. It's kind of interesting to me. Like of all this, how come you know basketball? Obviously, I'm not trying to stick up for basketball because it's my favorite sport. But I mean, like, how come basketball is not influenced in all these countries? Why was it soccer originally? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, like I think that it it had to do with you can't dribble a, a pile of rags, you know. So like. You know, it has to do with poverty and, and the history of it. And, and so it might have its roots in poverty um, and how the ease of that it was to play it. And now it's just a cultural thing. So it's taken hold. I mean, soccer is the fastest growing sport in America, apparently, too. So you have a lot of young kids that are really into it, that love playing it. And that, uh, you know, and parents love to promote mm-hmm. it because it, it promotes their kids getting out there and running around. Um you know, I wasn't a kid that loved to run around. I was I, when I played baseball. I was a catcher. You know, I swam a little bit, but for the most part, I, I played golf. So I wasn't I wasn't a big running sports guy. <laughs> yeah, what's it called? Um, and in my opinion, another sport that you can influence with poverty, and uh, especially in the country Jamaica, is track and field. Because I mean, if you've seen. Um, the kids that train, especially like the young oh, yeah. kids, like they start training like at six or seven. They they have much, they don't have professional tracks to run on. They're barefoot on these rough terrains and just like it's so natural to them. You know what I mean? So I'd say track is a track oh, is yeah. another Run, sport. Well, that's up running there in, in general, of, right? You like pop- you don't need anything but your feet. And look at look at so another way the way to look at it also is sociology. Why are Kenyans the best? long Mm -hmm. distance runners well when you grow up in a village and you have to you have to you have to run two or three miles or five miles to get to the the next closest village or to where your to where your water is from like a mark to you know run long distances in order to not get eaten by a lion (laughs) you know you're 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 more likely to be pretty Mm -hmm. good at running and and distances so I think like it's all about your surroundings with regards to how you grow up. Uh, 
soccer is taking hold. I mean, there's still a lot of really poor areas, and soccer is just the the has, has just dominated the global scene in sports. It's it's fantastic how much money it brings in and the stardom that it brings to a lot of people. I remember watching four years ago. I don't know if it was four years ago at the Olympics that Columbia had a good run and that young kid that was, you know, 18, 19 years old on their team that ended up getting drafted into the European European League. You know, it changed his life. He he came from nothing in a poor village in, in you know, in Colombia, basically living in a shack. But because of his ability with soccer, he was able to, you know, sign a huge check, take his family and his and his loved ones out of poverty and and and. You know, I think that's a fantastic thing to be able to climb the social ladder uh, and change someone's life like that. Oh, yeah, especially. Is that, I mean, you got to give these people a lot of credit. I mean, like, they don't got a lot to work with, and they're willing to sacrifice everything they can just to find a yeah. right spot for their I mean, I was just it's talking really with, uh, you know, my girlfriend's Chinese, and I was just talking to her because the backstroke just happened, the 200-meter 200, 200, uh, uh, backstroke final. And they had two Chinese swimmers in the finals. And she said, this can't be the finals. There's no way that two Chinese, you know, are in the finals for the backstroke uh, in swimming. And they were, but they finished like seventh and eighth or whatever. And uh, I was just like, well, <laughs> China's at a huge disadvantage because they put so much emphasis on studying and so little emphasis on extracurriculars and sports. So, again, where you grow right. matters. I mean, in America – particularly like we dominate the Olympics because we have the ability to have these extracurricular activities. Um, we're not, we're not as concerned about surviving and we can focus more on, on playing sports or playing a game essentially. Yeah. That's a big thing that I, I'm not going to lie. It's kind of something I think every kid in America takes for granted. A lot of kids can come home, do their homework and go shoot around. Well, other kids have to no, I mean, it, it's if only survive, kids really is... knew how it was in the rest of the world. I mean, they might they might study a little bit harder because there are entire, you know, villages of kids who might only have two or three kids out of the entire village or city that have an opportunity to go to a good a good school in high school. Like if you don't pass an entrance exam for mm -hmm. high school, if you're from the country in China and you don't pass an entrance exam to go to a good high school, like you're pretty much doomed to be either a farmer or a factory worker the rest of your life. And this is from the time you're like 10, you know, like from the time you're like five, if you're not studying and working your ass off and, and, you know, you, you basically dictate the rest of your life in your, in your childhood and kids like kids in America don't mm -hmm. think that way. You know, like we, we just we're, we're raised with a lot more privilege. And I think to an extent it hurts us. Yeah. And in all honesty, um, with a lot of college sports teams, their primary focus is, uh, especially with a lot of universities like in the SEC, like with college football, for example, like Alabama. The And you look at a school like Stanford versus a school like Alabama. You know, Alabama recruits, I mean, in all honesty, they don't give a damn about if you're a 4.0 or a 2.8 to play football. You can come get free education at Alabama. You know what I mean? Versus if you're a Stanford um, college football player, Obviously, Stanford is one of the toughest universities in this nation to get into. So, I mean, there's, it's, it's, there's athletes and then there's student athletes. You know, that's what I'm trying to get at is, you know, a lot of schools, unfortunately, take athletics, athletics over uh, education because that's what's going to make the school the most money. You know what I mean? So, it's like, it's kind of rough to see a lot of professional, like, I'm not going to lie, like, I'm not a big fan of the whole, um, how back in the day you can just go to the NBA straight out of high school. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm not a big fan of the one and done rule either. I believe you should go at least two years at the NFL or something like that. It's like two years of uh, two years of college or something like that. I believe all sports should adopt that rule in all honesty because education is something that sports yeah. aren't going to last forever. Steve Young, quarterback on the Niners, he has a degree in law as his backup after the NFL. None of these athletes have backup plans. And you see a lot of them fall into bankruptcy, and they got nothing to fall back on because they take everything they have for granted. They never well, you see that. You see that too. Athletics. Like even the Which kids you went to high school with that were, you know, the jocks that were, you know, goofing off, thinking that they were going to write their own ticket. You know, they were big fish in a little pond, and they thought they were something special. You know, a lot of them end up falling back on doing something physical, either either as a construction worker. Oh, you end up with. Um, 
you know, a lot of firefighters, a lot of police officers, you know, a lot of those guys are just ex jocks that, you know, didn't concentrate on school. All they did was concentrate on sports. And, you know, I hope that they end up making a good career of it. Uh, but, you know, they're kind of pigeonholed because of the fact that they, uh, they, they went all in on sports and goofed off the rest of their time. Yeah. I'm, I, I don't know about yourself. I'm pretty sure you can relate. Uh, I'm not the type of person to think about, you know, what if I did this, I'm going to make sure I do what I want to do. So I don't have to worry. I don't have to regret what I do. I don't have to No, I regret what I can do, but I don't regret what I didn't end up doing or trying to pursue that could have made my, myself better. You yeah. Know what I mean, yeah, exactly. No, I've, I've always been one that, uh, you know, I'm going to rent my own ticket and do my own thing. So, um, that's just the way that I am. Yeah. I think I uh, kind of misconceived your question or the statement yesterday about the soccer being popular. I thought I meant right now soccer is popular because it doesn't look right. I, I'm not going to lie. I, it's, it's fact in history. It's been proven, you know, that a lot of countries are poverty stricken and that's why soccer has become so popular in certain countries. But when I read that, I thought you meant right now, the reason why soccer is a multi-billion dollar industry in this world <laughs> is because that it's poor. No, it's, it's, uh, it's, how, how, it's, like, how, it's how it developed and, and it's a cultural thing. Now it's, now, now it's like the, of course. it's their, no their country's favorite that. pastime. Um, drives me nuts to watch a soccer game though. I can't do it, man. Uh, the, the other day I was at, I was eating yeah. dinner at somewhere and they had the game on and I, you know, I watched America score. The girls, the girls are fun to watch in the Olympics and I'll, I'll, I'll you know, they might score a few more goals. That's probably why. And they're, they're better to look at, but <laughs> it was something. Yeah. yeah. Soccer definitely is a cultural stem because me personally, I'm Portuguese. So like, uh, I just got done this past month watching the, the European championship and all that. So, I mean, like it is a cultural thing because I was brought up, because I have grandparents that are first generation immigrants in this country. And so my grandpa kind of brought me up under the swing of, Hey, Portuguese soccer is the best. Sport yeah, of ever. course. So that's what kind of, it so, is, so you so got, in, that's what it, brought it's me up called getting it. indoctrinated, you know, like people get indoctrinated into everything when they're a kid, you know, as, as, as sick as it is, you know, like a lot of it is, is usually religious. You know, you get kids that are raised like Catholic that swear by it because their parents told them. And, you know, like, I'll give you an example. I was watching um, the news and they were, they were interviewing people at the Trump rally here in Fort Lauderdale and I'm in South Florida and you got some 17 year old girl who can't even vote talking out of her ass about why she's going to vote for Trump and why he's the best thing and why she doesn't like Hillary. And it's just words straight out of her, her, her dad's mouth. She doesn't know shit. She's 17 years old. And meanwhile, she's like super opinionated on it. Like, like just oh, like, I'm going in a little bit. I'm talking right now on the on that debate app that I was yeah, talking yeah. about earlier. All right. But yeah, it's like people don't have their own voice. They go under what they're brought up with. But me personally, I don't let that affect me. I'm I'm the type of person that, you know, although like I said earlier, I was brought up under uh, the belief of, you know, a cultural thing with soccer. I mean, I still genuinely do love the sport. Like if I didn't, I'm the type of person that if you try to influence me with something and I don't end up like, enjoying what you're trying to get me into i'm not gonna just say i like it because you told me about it. i was gonna be like no dude screw this this isn't what i'm about you know yeah what I mean? man all right well it was good talking to you hopefully we can uh, have some more conversations yeah my parents are harping on uh, my parents are harping on me because i was supposed to be at the gym but instead i was talking on this. all right well get to the gym and do your thing man take it easy all right see ya